Welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have the integral from negative one to one of nine x to the eighth power times the quantity x to the ninth power plus two squared. And so the first thing that we're going to want to do to solve this definite integral using u substitution is to figure out what we are going to set u equal to. And in most cases, when you see that you have a composite function within your integrand, such as this one right here, where we have x to the ninth power plus two quantity squared, you're going to want to set that inside function equal to u. In most cases, that's going to work. But another way you could think of it is when you look at your integral, do you see a function and its derivative within the function inside your integral? And so in this case, x to the ninth plus two, if you take the derivative of this, you would get a function of x to the eighth power. And so let's take a look at that. If we set u equal to x to the ninth power plus two, and then take the derivative, we'll have that du dx is equal to nine x to the eighth power, and that would be it, right? Because when we take the derivative of x to the ninth power, we'll multiply by the exponent to have nine x, and then subtract one from the exponent to get eight. And then a derivative of two is zero because a derivative of any constant like two is zero. And so then if we solve for du in this case, we will have that du is equal to nine x to the eighth power, dx, right? We just multiplied both sides by dx. And so now when you look at your integral here, do you see nine x to the eighth power dx? And so I see the dx right here, and I see nine times x to the eighth power right here. And so we can replace nine x to the eighth power dx with du, and we can replace this inside function here with u, right? That's what we set it equal to. And so we can rewrite this definite integral in terms of u, and we'll have that this is equal to the integral from negative one to one of u squared times du, right? We replaced x to the ninth plus two with u, so we just have u squared right here, and then we substituted in du for nine x to the eighth and dx, which is what we found over here. And so now before we move on to the next step, it's important to realize that with this integral right here, these bounds are not in terms of u, right? These are not values of u, they are still values of x. Because originally up here, we were looking at a function defined with x, and we wanted to integrate it from x equals negative one to x equals positive one. And so it's going to be helpful to rewrite these bounds so that it says x is equal to one and x is equal to negative one. That way when you integrate this, you don't get confused and plug these values of x into your antiderivative defined with u, right? You don't wanna do that. And you'll see what I mean in our next step. Because if we integrate this using the power rule for integration, we will have that this is equal to u to the power of three divided by three, and that will be evaluated from x equals negative one to x equals positive one. Right, so the power rule says that we add one to our exponent, so we did that to get three, and then we divided by that new exponent of three, and we still have those same bounds. And so now we have two different options of what we can do to solve this definite integral. And I'll show you the first method with this example, and I'll show you the second method with our next example, and then we'll kind of switch back and forth from there. But our first method to solve a definite integral with u substitution at this point is just to substitute back what we set u equal to in terms of x, and then just evaluate from there. And so if we plug what we set u equal to back into here, this will be equal to x to the ninth power plus two cubed divided by three, and that is evaluated from negative one to one. And I didn't write x equals this time for our bounds because now this is defined with x, and so we don't have to worry about making any mistakes with regards to plugging in the incorrect bounds. We can now just evaluate this at one and then subtract the evaluation at negative one. And so this will be equal to one to the ninth power plus two quantity cubed divided by three minus negative one to the ninth power plus two cubed divided by three. And so then one to the ninth power is just one, right? One to any power is just one. And so then we have one plus two, which is three. So we'll have three cubed divided by three. So this will be equal to three cubed divided by three. And then we will be subtracting negative one to the ninth power and negative one to any odd power, right? So negative one to the third power or negative one to the fifth power, or in this case, negative one to the ninth power, right? Nine is an odd number. That is going to be equal to negative one. And so we'll have negative one plus two, which will be positive one. And so we'll have positive one cubed divided by three. And so we'll be subtracting one cubed 
divided by 3. And so then 3 cubed is 27. And so we'll have that this is equal to 27 divided by 3 minus 1 cubed divided by 3. So that's just 1 divided by 3. So we'll have 1 third. And so since these two fractions have the same denominator, we can just subtract their numerators and our answer will be 26 thirds. That is the final answer to this definite integral. All right, let's look at another example. For our next example, we have the integral from zero to two of three x divided by the square root of one plus two x squared. And so in this case, in order to figure out what we're going to set u equal to, we want to look for a function and its derivative, and then we'll set u equal to that function. And so down here, I see we have one plus two times x squared, and the derivative of x squared will be a function of x to the first power, which will look similar to what we have in our numerator here. And so in this case, I think we're going to want to set u equal to one plus two x squared. Another indicator that that would be a good choice for you is that that is a function inside another function, right? We have the square root of one plus two times x squared. That's another good sign that you probably wanna make that function equal to u. Okay, so we'll have that u is equal to one plus two x squared. And so then we'll take the derivative of that and we'll have du dx is equal to the derivative of one, which is just zero because the derivative of a constant like one is zero. And then the derivative of two x squared will be two times two, so we'll have four, and then x to the first power because we will subtract one from that exponent. And so then if we solve for du here by multiplying both sides by dx, we'll have that du is equal to four x dx. And so now if we look at our integral here, we wanna see if we can find four x dx somewhere in here so that it can be replaced by du. And instead of 4x dx, I see 3x dx. And so it's not quite a perfect matchup, but that's not gonna be a big deal. The only time you should be worried is if the degree of your x's are not the same. In this case, they both have x to the first power. And so that means we're good since they have the same degree of one. And so what we'll do is we'll just divide this four over to the other side. And so we'll have du divided by four is equal to x dx. And so we can replace x dx with du divided by four, right? That is totally fine because the whole idea of u substitution is that we are trying to eliminate all x's from this integral to have a simpler integral in terms of u. And so we're not so worried about constant multiples. We can leave three in here and still replace x and dx with du divided by four and be just fine. And so if we rewrite this integral in terms of u, this will be equal to the integral from x equals zero to x equals two, right? These bounds are still values of x. And then we will have three divided by the square root of u times du divided by four, right? So we replaced x dx with du divided by four, and we replaced one plus two x squared with what we set it equal to, which was u. And so we have the square root of u. And so now to make this simpler, we can pull out this three to the front and this one fourth to the front. And so we'll have that this is equal to three fourths times the integral from x equals zero to x equals two of one divided by u to the one half power du, right? We can rewrite the square root of u to be u to the one half power. And then we can move this to the numerator and have a negative exponent. So we'll have u to the negative one half power. And so now we have a function that we can integrate in terms of u. And so now if we use the power rule for integration here, we can add one to our exponent and then divide by that new exponent. And we'll have that this is equal to three fourths times u to the one half power, right? Negative one half plus one would be positive one half. And so then we will also divide by that positive one half. And that will be evaluated from x equals zero to x equals two. And so to simplify this a little bit, remember that when you divide by a fraction, that is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction. And so we can multiply u to the one half power by two divided by one, which would be just two, right? So this would be equal to three fourths times two times u to the one half power evaluated from x equals zero to x equals two. And so then three times two is six and six divided by four would reduce to three halves. And so I'll just rewrite that here. We will have three halves times u to the one half power. And so now in order to evaluate this, we either need to replace u with what we set it equal to, right? That's what we did in our previous example, or we could change our bounds to be values of u. And the way we'll do that is plug these values of x into what we set u equal to and solve for u. 
And so if we look at our lower bound here, x equals zero, if we plug that into this equation right here and solve for u, we will have that u is equal to one plus two times zero squared, and that will be equal to one plus zero, so that's equal to one. And so then this would be equal to three halves times u to the one half power evaluated from u equals one. And then for our upper bound, x equals two, we'll plug two in for x in this equation, and we'll have that u is equal to one plus two times two squared, which will be two times two squared, which is four, so two times four is eight, and so u will be equal to nine. And so then our upper bound would be u is equal to nine. And so then if we clean up our work here a little bit, we can then evaluate this antiderivative from one to nine in terms of u. We do not need to replace this u with what it is equal to in terms of x. We don't have to do that anymore because now our bounds are values of u and we can plug them right into u in this function. And so this will be equal to three halves times the square root of nine, right? This is actually just the square root of u. u to the one half power is the same as the square root of u. So if we plug nine in there, we'll have the square root of nine and then we will subtract plugging one in which would be the square root of one. And so this would be equal to three halves times three minus one because the square root of nine is three and the square root of one is one. And so this would be equal to three halves times two. And so that two and this two would cancel out. And so this would just be equal to three. And so this would be the final answer to this definite integral. And so now you have seen both methods of how you would evaluate a definite integral using u substitution, right? Once you get to this point where you have your bounds defined with x, but your function is in terms of u, you could either replace u with what it is equal to in terms of x, or you can change your bounds to be values of u instead of x. All right, let's look at one more final example for this video. All right, so for our last example, we have the integral from negative two to zero of y squared divided by the quantity y cubed minus two squared. And so in this case, I see that we have two different options of what we can set u equal to. We can either set it equal to y squared or y cubed minus two. But remember, when we take the derivative of that function, whatever we set equal to u, we wanna be able to find that derivative somewhere in this integral. And so if we set u equal to y cubed minus two, we know that the derivative of a cubed function will be a squared function because we're going to have to subtract one from that exponent, right? And so I think this function y cubed minus two will be a good pick for what we should set equal to u. Not to mention that it is also a function inside a composite function, which is also a good indicator that we should probably set it equal to u. And so we'll have that u is equal to y cubed minus two. And if we take the derivative of that, we'll have du dy, not dx. Remember, this is defined with y, not x. And that will be equal to three y squared, and that would be it. Right, we take the derivative of y cubed, we use the power rule by multiplying that three down and then subtracting one from the exponent to have y squared. And then of course the derivative of negative two is zero because the derivative of a constant like negative two is zero. And so then if we solve for du by multiplying both sides by dy, we'll have that du is equal to three y squared dy. And so now if we look at our integral here, we wanna to try to find three y squared dy but I don't see a three anywhere, but I do see y squared and dy. And so all we have to do to make this match up with what is in our integral is to divide both sides by three. And so if we do that, we'll have du divided by three is equal to y squared dy, right? So now we have y squared dy, which we can find in our integral here. And so now we're ready to rewrite our integral in terms of u. And so this will be equal to the integral from y equals negative two to y equals zero. And then we'll have one divided by u squared times du divided by three, right? So we replaced y cubed minus two with what we set it equal to, which is u. So we have u squared right here. And then we replaced y squared dy with what we found that that was equal to, which is du divided by three, which we have right here. And so if we pull this one third out to the front of the integral, this will be equal to one third times the integral from y equals negative two to y equals zero. And then we can rewrite this function right here to be u to the negative second power by moving this to the numerator. So the exponent would be negative. So we'll have u to the negative second power du. And now we have a function that we can integrate using the power rule. And so this will be equal to one third times u to the power of negative one divided by negative one, right? We added one to our exponent to get negative one. And then we divided by that exponent of negative one. 
and that will still be evaluated from y equals negative two to y equals zero. All right, and so then if we simplify this a little bit, we can divide one third by negative one and we'll have negative one third, and then we can move this u to the negative first power to the denominator so it has a positive first power. And so this will be equal to negative one divided by three times u evaluated from y equals negative two to y equals zero. All right, so then if we clean up our work here, we are now at the step in the process where we need to make a decision. We either want to replace u with what it is equal to in terms of y, or we can change our bounds from being values of y to values of u. And so in this case, I'm going to choose to do the first method in order to evaluate this. I'm just gonna replace u with what we set it equal to in terms of y. And so this will be equal to negative one divided by three times y cubed minus two, and that will be evaluated from negative two to zero. And so this will be equal to plugging zero into our antiderivative. So we'll have negative one divided by three times zero cubed minus two, and we will subtract plugging negative two into this function. And so we'll have negative one divided by three times negative two cubed minus two, and then we can simplify this. We'll have zero cubed minus two right here, and that will just be zero minus two. So we have negative two times three, and so we'll have negative six in the denominator here. And so this will be equal to negative one divided by negative six. And then these two negatives will become positive. So we have plus negative two cubed will be negative eight. And so negative eight minus two will be negative 10. And then negative 10 times three would be negative 30. So we have one divided by negative 30. And so then if we clean up our work here a little bit, this will be equal to one sixth minus one thirtieth which if we multiply the numerator and denominator by five so that we have a denominator of 30, this will be equal to five thirtieths minus one thirtieth. And so our answer would be four thirtieths, which reduces to two fifteenths. And so that would be the final answer to this definite integral. Okay, and so that's all I had for this example's video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.